all right all right all right welcome ladies and gentlemen to another and a new episode of let's talk season two and we'll be jumping into some things that are kind of different this season i'll be focusing on at least addressing more of a personal side than just a tutorial on bible studies we are all clear that we could easily find those teachings online and i wanted to be a little bit more personal and at least share my understanding with some scriptures what i've learned but also at the same time make it an open space for each and every one of you to share your thoughts or the understanding of the context of theology and verses that you find speak to you which is help in strengthening your bond with god and most likely knowing more about him seeking him through all the days of your life speaking about seeking him today's episode for season two we'll be jumping into something that i feel like as christians we need to have a talk about have you ever found yourself pondering the concept of spiritual awakening as a christian well i'm very sure you're not alone many believers wonder about that origin of this question and in relevance to the faith i could say it's very common especially in the african christian community that i'm from we find it very hard to at least address this most cases it's a follow-up with uh teachings steps on enlightenment how to be successful be prosperous and most of the times as we dive deeper into these things they literally lead us away from god and trying to understand spiritual awakening or spiritual lightning is kind of a thing that people don't fully address mostly it is to satisfy the human longing for immortality and a purpose seeking for a goal to become something to have meaning to what we already have people have like this idea and attempt to meet that longing through a variety of emotional experiences that they can easily claim it's god through music with high emotions raising the aspects and hyping them up spiritually and giving them these emotions but honestly speaking that's not how we enlighten ourselves we can't control or create our own gods nor can we decide how we will approach the almighty God is already there. God is the God, not a God. For you to know God, for you to know him, it is through his son Jesus Christ. And in most cases, I feel like even I was accustomed to it because there's so many days and so many moments where I feel detached, feel less behind in understanding how can I draw myself closer to knowing who God is. The issue at hand often stems from a desire for a deepened connection with God and a yearning to understand the purpose of one's spiritual journey. We're all searching for that profound experience that transforms our faith. But the problem is, why do we feel this way? Most time it's rooted in a longing for a more meaningful relationship with God and a recognition that the mundane routine sometimes leaves us spiritually hungry. Some people, speaking of the mundane routine, they think prayer isn't enough. They think fasting is just a strain. They think reading the Bible becomes boring. But I'm here to tell you that the reason is clear. We seek a closer connection with the divine. Instead of avoiding prayer, instead of walking away from fasting, walking away from reading his word, that is our soul telling us there is something we need to do we need to do more of it there's nothing wrong about us seeking god fully and i have fallen a victim to it and so have you now i hope that we can turn to the bible to shed light on this spiritual quest one of the key verses addressing this is jeremiah 29 verse 13 from the kjv it says and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart it's kind of powerful and i do want to let you know and reflect on to it where the verse reminds us that our spiritual awakening is not only sought after but promised to those who earnestly seek god as it says we need to seek him the first thing is to seek him and as we seek him and find him 
We should search for him through all our hearts, earnestly, intentionally. It shouldn't be of a routine, mundane feeling, but we should fully seek him. To deepen our understanding, let's explore the Bible and through a story that encapsulates the essence of spiritual awakening. How about the story of the prodigal son, which is mostly like the very common example. But if you follow up and see the comparison with Jeremiah 29 verse 13, you see that the prodigal son seeked the father. He found the father. And through the process and in the stage of finding him, he was searching with all his heart. It doesn't matter where you are right now. It doesn't matter what you're doing. But whatever sin, whatever troubles, whatever thoughts that you have, the enemy is placing in your mind. See it at that point that you need to strengthen and get your connection right with God. Deepen your prayers. Extend them if you have to. And consider fasting and prayer as a powerful combination for drawing closer to God. This isn't just a random suggestion or some hullabaloo, Kenneth Copeland type of stuff or some Bushiri quoting Tor Joshua Selman type of stuff. I'm not trying to sell you something that isn't true, that hasn't been working, but it is what the Bible states. For us to get closer to God, we need to pray and fast. This isn't just some weird suggestion. It's rooted in biblical practices and has been shown to have profound effects on spiritual growth. At least try it a day or a week and observe the changes in your perspectives. And additionally, engage in interactional acts of kindness. I know, I know, it's not through our works that we are saved, but it does help with the characters and the portrayals of how we act around each other. For instance, we do have this tendency of praying and fasting, but do we really understand and observe how it's changing our actions and our acts to be more righteous, to walk towards a life that God wants us to be in, how God will lead us into his truth. Those are one of the things that we can experience when we follow the word of God, when we follow prayer, when we are committed intentionally. Like for reference on my side, not in the work side, but just to explain, in Psalms 143 verse 10, it says, teach me to do thy will for thy art my God. But thy soul is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Clearly gives us an idea of God teaching us, the way that God can teach us to work into his will. It is through his word. And through his word, it keeps us upright, doing good where it is needed. And kindness is a way to do so. Whether it's volunteering or helping a neighbor, these actions align with the teachings of Jesus and contribute to our spiritual well-being. So I want you to remember this journey is a personal and much more eventful thing for you. And it's okay to have questions. Feel free to drop them in the comments below. Let's build a community of secret. Before we wrap up, here's a call to action. Spend some time this week in prayer, seeking that deeper connection with God. And of course, read the word. Take your time to know more about God. Understand, read and find out about God's attributes. Find out what it means to be a follower of Christ. Read more and know more about him. As we pray, we speak to God. But it's through the word of God that he speaks to us. Use that opportunity to have a strong connection with him. Well, I know this might be weird. And I am kind of making this video short for some people and yes I have finally moved out of my old crib but all in all I do appreciate each and every one of you guys taking the time to listen and spending some time to share the word of God may you stay blessed God bless you and yeah see you next episode thank you and God bless you for all the time you spent on listening watching and skipping my videos it means a lot that at least you guys thought of spending your time for Jesus Christ clicking the like button and ringing the bell so you don't miss out on more teachings poems songs and following the links in the description below to support this channel and all that I can say is